I think this thing, type of thing would have gone on since the, we have pulled out of Vietnam and kind of gone down in, you know, the world's opinion that maybe they can get away with a few things with the United States that they couldn't have before. I think that, you know, if our ships are attacked in international waters, which, as I understand it, is what happened, I think that he was com completely within his rights and powers to do what he did. It's lucky that it turned out the way it did, and this probably makes a hero out of him, whereas he would have been a scapegoat if it had failed, but it still was the best he could do. I think President Ford was correct in sending the military over to help in the Mayagüez situation. Well, after they waited so long and uh, they were ready to deal, no. But if he had done it immediately, then I think maybe for once I would have been in favor of it. What is your opinion of the troops going over la yesterday? Well, I think it probably was okay. I want them to know that we mean business, and I think it was an act of ag aggression. Um, I don't want to get into another scrimmage, however, but uh, I think they, if they can get by with it once, they get by with it again. I don't believe in using military force in order to get a point across. I'm a believer in diplomacy. The, word, the power of the word is a lot more uh, subtle and more, much more effective than the power of the sword. I think that we could have talked things out and gotten things done and kept our image up a lot better than using force. We've used force much too often and it's starting to get outdated. Judge R.K. Richardson sustained a motion for dismissal, ruling that the plaintiff, Gerard Berryhill, failed to show actual negligence on the part of Mary Greeley Hospital, the McFarland Clinic, or Dr. David Wall Sr. Richardson said the brain damage could have resulted from a number of causes and that it would have been up to the jury to guess how it happened. He added that the plaintiff failed to produce competent testimony. Dr. Wall seemed very relieved. The suit has been hanging over him for two years. His reaction was simply, I think the judge was right. Gerard's father, in a conversation before the ruling, said he would probably let the case die, but afterwards he backed off that statement and said he would have to consult his attorneys. As for Gerard Berryhill, the future is not different than the past. With his speech impediment, lack of coordination, and spotty intelligence, he'll probably continue to hold part-time menial jobs and end up on Social Security. From the Story County Courthouse, this is Brett Voorhees reporting. One of the basic tenets of our system of government is a basic belief in the collective wisdom of the trial jury. But a recent research project by a Drake professor seems to say that the jury system is not only less than perfect, but that many lawyers don't know how to use the jury to their advantage. Dr. Robert Forston of the Drake Department of Speech Communication studied the Pettit jury systems in Iowa, Minnesota, and Illinois for six years. And as a result of his findings, he says the time-honored judge-jury and lawyer-jury relationships need changing. Among his findings, Dr. Forston says that juries don't wait until the end of a trial to form a decision. So, he says, lawyers who wait until then to present most of their evidence will not usually be successful in winning a case, in spite of the fact that that's how Perry Mason usually does it. Dr. Forston says trial lawyers should be more involved in jury selection and they shouldn't play up to the foreman. Although the foreman is usually believed to be the leader of a jury, he says that's only the case about half the time, and normally two or three jurors are primarily responsible for formulating a jury's thinking and reaching a decision. Finally, Dr. Forston believes that juries have only an imperfect picture of their duties and that judges should give them more extensive instructions, not just at the end of testimony, but throughout the trial. 
Under the present ground rules, he says, juries simply don't have enough training to make a quality decision. This is Kirk Winkler reporting. Well, I certainly would approve a study of such a move. I'd like to see what the effects can be. I think the ICC, in many cases, has been a stumbling block to the health of railroads and, indeed, uh, truck lines as well, in many cases. Uh, I'm not sure that we can get along without any ICC, but I think it could be uh, greatly streamlined and modernized. I'm not sure that we couldn't get along without it, but I'd like to see the facts in that matter. Regulatory agencies have a way of getting out of hand. They, uh, instead of uh, starting out to uh, uh, in fact, get to some kind of basic regulation. We often end up with uh, these agencies making broad policies, uh, being enormous bureaucracies that are really stumbling blocks in, uh, in, uh, to any kind of progress. Proceed 
can't close it. Yeah. Well, it's the fact that uh, people were just not adjusted to the idea or seemed not to be able to adjust to the idea that a woman could lead an orchestra. And I don't understand why not, really, because uh, people mix in life and they should mix in this sort of thing too. And it has nothing to do with uh, man or woman. It has to do whether one is talented, born with talent for music or for anything and it doesn't relegate itself to one sex, just that they have been denied opportunities right from the beginning.